Welcome to the Texas Gulf Coast. I've lived here, taught here, virtually my entire life. Everyone, every building, and every street corner here has a story, and I've set out to find them. I'm Professor John Britt of Lee College, and this is the history in your own backyard. It was the summer of 1966 when Lee College Dean Walter Rundell called me into his office to discuss a new program the college was initiating in the Texas Department of Corrections. He then asked me if I would like to teach an American history class there in the fall. I was, needless to say, stunned. Teach history in a prison? To convicts? I was a young teacher with only two years tenure at Lee College and still on probation. I knew what Dean Rondell was saying. I was going to teach in the prison in the fall. My father, an executive with a natural gas transmission company, was even less impressed. Boy, he said, I did not help you go to college so you could teach criminals. That fall, five of us drove to Huntsville on a Saturday. Dale Adams, who taught English, would teach at Gorey at the time the women's unit. I, along with Don Perry, whose discipline was math, was assigned to Ferguson. Phil Dignam, English, and math teacher Bob Seal would teach at Ellis, a unit for hardcore recidivists. However, before we were to be dropped off at our respective units, we were to go to the Walls unit in Huntsville, where we were to meet with the legendary director of the Texas Department of Corrections, Dr. George Beto, as well as Alonso Langley, TDC Director of Educational Services, and the warden. There is a wonderful photo of the five of us in the warden's office at the Walls. I often joke that we look like a group of Baptist preachers. After a short visit, we left for our respective assignments. We dropped Adams off at Goree, Seal then took Perry and me to Ferguson as he and Dignam proceeded to Ellis. Going a little nicely about who did what first, I guess I taught the first class because they left me off at Goree and then it was 30 minutes to the next unit and 30 minutes to the next unit and so forth. Come on girls, get on the job, we've got a lot to do today. Being a um, fan of movies, and I was you know, teaching at the women's unit, I thought I was going to go in and see Ida Lupino and, and uh, all of the women in prison uh, cliches that I had seen. Since you've all decided not to work or to eat, we'll just have to send you back to your cells until you're hungry enough to change your minds. Well, there was no Ida Lupino in there, and it wasn't anything like that at all. Entering the prison, I was taken to my classroom introduced and then left alone with some 24 young men in prison white. As I somewhat nervously explained the course, I have no doubt that my voice cracked. Little did I realize that I was beginning 20 years of the most rewarding and exciting experiences of my teaching career. Over the next two decades, I drove once, sometimes twice a week, to the Huntsville area prisons. Ferguson, The Walls, Ellis One, East Ham, I not only taught American history, but Texas history, world history, geography, and on one occasion, marriage and the family, a sociology course. From the beginning, we insisted that our inmate students meet the same standards as our free world students. Our students were an eclectic group and consisted of every felony imagined. We treated them with the same respect as we treated our students on campus and expected to be treated with respect as well. After a few years, we began to witness the positive fruits of our labor. Inmates who received their associate degrees when released became productive citizens, often obtaining a bachelor's and on occasion advanced graduate degrees. In the meantime, I suggested to my father that he accompany me to visit one of my American history classes at Easttown. Dad, still skeptical of my prison assignment, somewhat reluctantly agreed. This was in the summer. The classes were four hours long and there was no air conditioning. From the spark, my dad was impressed with the respectful demeanor of my inmate students and their apparent enthusiasm and desire to learn under less than ideal circumstances. During the breaks, he visited with some of the students and by the time we left the unit late that afternoon, he was a convert. Dad was active in the Baytown Chamber of Commerce and subsequently gave a speech to the chamber endorsing the importance of the college experience in a prison and its role in reducing 
recidivism. And that is the point. We are aware that participation in the college program has a profound impact on reducing recidivism and have the statistics to support this claim. We trust that others will take heed and continue to support college behind the razor wire.